This video is about one of the best values in today's wine world. The focus here will be on a classification of Bordeaux known as Cru Bourgeois. Hi, I'm Bob Polinski. I've been a master of wine for more than 20 years. I've worked in the wine trade for more than 40 years, and I post YouTube videos as often as I can. I'll talk a bit about what Cru Bourgeois means, what makes it so special, and I'll also include a tasting of two classic examples that see very good international availability. For starters, I'll provide a surefire hack to cut through the noise in order to reliably find some of the very best values from within Bordeaux. Many of the wines can be found in that $25 to $40 price range. If there is anything that you take from this video, First, know there are thousands of wine producers within Bordeaux, and prices can range from just a few euro per bottle to thousands per bottle. And second, the French love classification systems for their wines. Within the left bank, we're talking about that far western part of Bordeaux that's in close proximity to the Atlantic Ocean. This is a place that's renowned for the 1855 Grand Cru classification. If you know it, you probably have a strong opinion on it. Rightly or wrongly, it still carries a good deal of clout within the wine world. This is a topic for an entirely separate video. But do know that the Grand Crus are big dollar wines, sometimes house payment big dollar wines with lofty reputations. But what if you're looking for wines at a lower cost that still display the telltale Bordeaux character along with the true sense of place? The best option is to look at a classification known as Cru Bourgeois. Search out those words on the wine label. The journey of Cru Bourgeois is one that ties back to the Middle Ages, and along the way the story has plenty of ups and downs, so much so it's worthy of a Netflix docudrama. The Cru Bourgeois classification includes a range of select petit chateaus from the left bank. It's solely comprised of red wines. It stands in contrast to the 1855 classification that has remained virtually unchanged since being published. The Cru Bourgeois classification is evolving. Wine properties may be added or dropped from the list. There are a range of quality-minded requirements that must be met. Currently, nearly 250 chateaus carry the designation. If you're in wine geek mode, Check the link in the description to get the fine details. But the bottom line is the current classification system, while not perfect, is broadly a reliable and trusted resource when it comes to searching out high quality wines from this part of the world, usually at reasonable prices. At the present time, over one third of the wine volume from this region is designated as Cru Bourgeois. Cabernet Sauvignon is often a primary focus, but Merlot is grown widely as well. The wines will see time in oak, the length will vary, but about 12 months is typical. The wines to be tasted in this video, along with Cru Bourgeois in general, can be found in many markets around the world. Any good wine shop should have a solid selection. They can often be found with some bottle age, which adds to the value. The wines for this video were purchased in Kuala Lumpur, a very good market for Bordeaux. The first wine up is the 2016 Chateau Labadie, which is located in the northern part of Madoc. I've tried wines from this property many times over the years, but this is the first time tasting the 2016. The vineyard is 70 hectares in size. The vines average in age around 30 years. The wine is approximately equal parts of Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot with a small percentage of Cabernet Franc. The wine sees time in oak barrels, about 25% of it being new oak. Expect to pay about 35 US dollars per bottle. The wine shows good depth of color with some fade at the edge of the glass, very typical for a wine of this age. It's always a good idea to take a look at the cork after pulling it out, and in this case, it looks just fine. It's in solid condition, no crumbling. It's showing no signs of significant bleeding up the sides of the cork. It's full natural cork that has absolutely done its job. 
Now, in terms of the wine itself, as I mentioned, it does have a, a bit of that look of a wine that has some age to it. There's a little bit of bricking as you get out to the edge of the glass, but it really does look very, very healthy. Uh, it's not browning at all, so it's not like it's showing signs of being over the hill. It really does look quite mature. Oh, the aroma on this is outstanding. It has that cassis fruit character, and as is characteristic of many Bordeaux in the left bank, there is a very distinctive cigar box note here. Uh, it smells wonderful. There's good intensity. There's good breath to it. Uh, it. It's also showing some of those tertiary notes that come with bottle age. But in terms of the way this smells, this is a very classically built Bordeaux. Love the way this wine smells. On the palate, uh, all those characteristics from the aroma follow through. That cassis note really does sing. There's good weight. The wine has some good extract to it. Uh, very complete in the front, mid, and back palate. The wine shows uh, a very skilled hand in, in production. There is a bit of oak here, and this wine spends about a year in, in French oak. Uh, it does have a little bit of that smoky charred characteristic. And for me, maybe it's a function of age, but I am really enjoying wines that have more of a tap down oak character, especially when the wines are aged. Oftentimes when the wines age, that fruit character starts to tap down and the oak really starts to dominate. This only having about a year in oak, it's a nice complementary element, really love it. There's some tannins on the back palate, but generally speaking, a good solid Cru Bourgeois from a good vintage, which is what we have here, usually goes 10 to 12 years out from the vintage. So this one is nearing prime time. Really love the way this wine shows from start to finish. Uh, I highly recommend this wine. And in terms of value, it's absolutely outstanding for those that like classically proportioned left bank Bordeaux. If you've not yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing it right now. Also hit that like button and definitely hit the notification bell. That way you'll be kept up to speed on all things happening here. All of these things help to get my videos pushed out to a broader audience. It's very much appreciated. The second wine up is the 2015 Chateau Ramafort from Medoc. I've had wines from this property many times over the last 30 years or so, but this is the first time tasting the 2015. This is consistently a very good source for value. The wine is sold in over 40 different countries around the world. The winemaking history of this property ties back more than 800 years. The wine is made from equal parts of Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot, it does receive time in oak as well, with a portion of it being new oak. Expect to pay around $25 U.S. per bottle. This wine shows a nice depth of color with a bit of fade out at the edge of the glass. With the second wine, the cork is also in excellent condition. For a wine that's pushing 10 years old, uh, this is in just great shape. It's, it's firm. There's no crumbling. You can see there is virtually no bleeding up the sides of the cork. So this is a natural cork that has definitely done its job. In terms of the appearance of this wine, it's quite similar to the previous. It's quite deep at the core. There's some fade as you get out to the edge. A little bit of that bricking. No browning, though. I mean, the color looks very, very healthy for a wine of this age. In terms of the aromatics, uh, quite different than the previous wine. It does have that black fruit cassis character. I mean, that much is certainly in common. But this wine is not showing that cigar box characteristic. This is a bit more of a mint character. Uh, the fruit seems a little bit brighter, a little bit fresher, a little more lively as well. On the palate, very nice. Uh, maybe just a touch less weight than the previous wine, but very good presence, front, mid, and back palate, good acidity, uh, tannins are extremely soft, 
That oak character does show. There's a little bit of that smoky chard characteristic, nice complement to the wine. I mean, well-balanced. Uh, for me, this is a little bit more of a modern style of Bordeaux. The first wine, a bit more of the, the classic traditional style. This one has a little bit more of a, a brighter fruit characteristic to it, but well-made, uh, nicely balanced. I mean, it really ticks all the boxes. Now with the 2015 and 2016, there are a couple of the best vintages from that decade. Lots of debate in terms of what is the better vintage between the two. For me, it's really a coin toss. And specifically looking at these two wines, the first one is more of a, a classic old school style. The second wine, a little bit more of a modern version of Bordeaux. So it's really a matter of preference of, of what you prefer. Now, in terms of value, I do say the first wine, I would just give it a, a slight nod in terms of quality and value for the money, but this is no slouch. Uh, the Ramafort is showing very well. Uh, I could drink this later tonight and enjoy it thoroughly, and, and I probably will. So it's just a matter of preference between the two, but a couple of outstanding examples of Cru Bourgeois. The wines were paired with slow-cooked beef short ribs. A bit of the Ramafort was used to deglaze the pot. For a guy that never cooks using a recipe, this turned out quite well. Well, for me, this is definitely going to be a Bordeaux sort of evening. I hope you're drinking something interesting as well. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. I do my very best to follow up on each and every one. Thanks for sticking around to the end of this video from Kuala Lumpur. Please stop back again before too long. Cheers.